Good morning, beautiful people, and welcome to the season finale of Mental Growth, a podcast dedicated to ending the stigma around mental illness, teaching healthy mental mannerisms, and improve overall health for everyone within the community. I am your host, Chelsea Brewer. Today's topic will be empowering mental health in all cultures and how we can unify together for the common goal of empowering. The vision is changing the next generation one mindset at a time. Today's show, we have several guests whom I will let introduce themselves individually. Before we get started, I would like to state that this show is not intended to in- intended to offend or bash anyone within any culture. We are to we want to come to a, a solution or strategies that we can use to empower everyone. <sighs> I am also going to be transparent and say that I am grieving. Um, I'm in a grieving mode this week. A close friend of mine passed away due to a mental illness. And this is one of the biggest reasons why I started this show. I may not be able to save everyone, but I aim to save as many friends and family members and even strangers. If this season touches At least one person, I can go to sleep with peace knowing that spreading awareness of mental health has saved someone or impacted them in positive ways. Regardless of illness or not, making mental health is a priority that is vital. And I'm happy to see celebrities empowering this change and even schools such as New York City adding mental health to part of the school curriculums. Okay. So now that I have that off my chest, let's introduce our panel this morning. Briefly, give me your name and your job title, starting with Miss Alethea. Hi, good morning, everyone. My name is Alethea. I am the founder of Empowerment Schooling. Good morning, everybody. My name is Alyssa, and I'm an empowerment coach and co-founder of Empowerment Schooling. Good morning. I'm Steve Brown. I'm a DJ. Uh, (laughs) I have a background in psychology and social work. That's important to say, I guess. (laughs) Oh, Steve. (laughs) Good morning, all. My name is Allison Dempsey. First, I'd like to say I'm very sorry for your loss, Chelsea, and I really appreciate you us having us on the show this week. Thank you. And uh, I am a board certified behavior analyst, and I own Tapestry Behavioral Health, which is a behavioral pediatric clinic that offers services uh, to children with disabilities. Um, And then my name is Anthony Hall. I mean, y'all know me. So (laughs) I am uh, the director of operations for Emerging Black Network, um, the show that the network is on. Yay. Good job, everybody. (laughs) So I just want to ask everybody, like, how, how did everybody week go? Anybody? Anybody? Super. Super? Yeah, my week went fantastic. DJ every single day. Oh my God, yes. <laughs> Actually, it didn't go so well. I lost at the award show. Oh, yes, yeah. Yes. So, there was an award show? Yes. For, right. I was trying to say. Yeah, I was uh, <laughs> top three in Bow City's Best Trivia Night, and I lost. Oh, I do remember because I voted for you. Thank you. I appreciate yeah, it. We all voted for you. Not enough people voted, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay because now you have a goal for next year. To not lose. To not yeah. more and right. get more votes so you can be the number one. Oh, you guys are so positive. Thank you. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I can feel the love already. Thank yeah. you. Yes. Yeah, it's, been a, it's been a pretty good week. I um, put my two weeks notice in at my previous Ow. degree. So I will be doing this full time now. Congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> That's a I will be doing it. <laughs> But uh, I'm excited. You got this. Yeah. yeah. I'm excited. Empowering yourself, brother. Listen, got to. Right. Got to. <laughs> got to. I can't believe how fast the week has gone. Um, so my week has been great, and Saturday just creeped right up on me today, and I don't think I have any complaints. Yeah, right. and congratulations to BCBA as well for you, Allison. Thank you so much. Yeah, six years working towards that certification. Yeah, it's very amazing. How's that exam? (laughs) Thank you very much. What about y'all, ladies? My week has been great. Can't complain, been busy um, with clients and working with youth and just every day helping people. So it's been real successful. New things, new beginnings, and I can't complain, I'm ready. 
My week has been one day, literally. <laughs> just one long day. One long. Is it still Monday for you? It's just it? one long Monday. One long, we're still Monday. <laughs> so it's, 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 I understand when you empower yourself, it never stops. Listen, and my goal is just to take stuff off my plate. Oh, yeah. That's a, that's a good goal. When you get there, let me know how that works. Okay. <laughs> It's a, it's a, it's a journey. Yeah, it's a journey. Okay. So let's get into today's discussion. So as I said in the beginning, you know, mental health is very important. Um, I'm glad that we are trending to, um, be more aware of it. Um, having celebrities, um, um, have a scholarship foundation for mental health, um, having schools um, put in mental health into the curriculum, and just making it just as important and vital as physical health or um, spiritual as well. So let's start by asking, what does mental disorders actually look like within different cultures and um, how we handle those. So I'm talking about depression, abuse, anxiety, um, drug addiction, um, anger management, any of those wide range of things. How does different cultures handle? From an African-American standpoint, we can't curse. So (laughs) when you show signs of those things as a child, you get your behind whipped. <laughs> and then they, you, they, they, it's not something that we embrace as a disability. Um, we raise our children to be as normal as possible in spite of what it looks like, what it sounds like, what it feels like, and they still will whoop your behind whether you're diagnosed with a disability or not. Um, from the African-American standpoint, we don't necessarily seek out unless it's like from an educational standpoint because then the parents don't want to keep coming up to the school. So they will definitely come to that good meeting to get you in this, the class for the disability. <laughs> but <beyond laughs> yeah, no. You, you, you get your behind whipped and they think that everything works when you get your behind whipped. Is that equal G- for boys and girls? Do you yeah. feel? And so, for those who can't see us, I'm I'm white, and I find that. <laughs> well, well, I can't. I don't want to speak from your perspective because I can't. But I find that in with um, white people, boy, little boys growing up, they're often told to internalize their emotions, mm-hmm. and they should not show any sort of feeling Correct. that would be sadness or grief or depression Correct. or even um, loving emotions. Correct. And little girls right. are more encouraged to do that. And so, I think there's an interesting disparity going on with how men and women are raised in white culture. Yeah, I agree with that, because I think men are generally told to uh, bite the bullet and Mm -hmm. toughen up and don't show any signs of weakness. Mm -hmm. And if, you know, you kind of reach out or you're a crier and you look as as soft or or whatever, or not a man, those guys kind of get left behind in the culture or whatever. That's true. Mm-hmm. I mean, coming from a mixed standpoint, being raised with both sides, to be honest, I agree with Alethea. But it's funny because my mom being white, I was also being a girl, taught not to express my feelings and hold it in and not being able to self-identify or looked at as using terms as, oh, you're too ghetto or, you know, so it's it from both sides, it's just... Did you I believe it's culture and what? Yes. And my mom used to, <laughs> woo, that was one of them mamas, white or not. <laughs> got her behind, tore it up. Oh, okay. So <laughs> it's just, you know, on both sides, being stuck in the middle is kind of hard to be a mixed race. Yeah, it sounds hard. Yeah. I mean, I could, I guess from an international perspective, because my family is pretty much British and West Indies. So, um, I mean, mental health and, and they, you can't really tell the signs mm-hmm. um, because they celebrate the person. Yeah. So it's a little different. Um, I don't want to say we're still naive to it per se, but we are more along the lines of, OK, well, he's just different and we identify him as different but we necessarily don't seek out to get the help because it's just different. 
And then if you go, you know, to some of the, you know, my, my family is British. The majority of my family is British. So over there, mental health is not, it's not a big thing That's just right. because of the fact that, okay, well, he's just different. Let him be in his own lane. You know, you tell your cousins and like, hey, listen, you just stay away from Jeff because Jeff's a little <laughs> Just isolate yeah. him. But that's, that's just how it is. You know what I mean? So, I mean, and you have to just take a look at it from, it's not even just a white, a black, because, mm-hmm. you know, when we were talking earlier, you know, British, I'm British American. So, okay, well, you have that situation where even different cultures across the world are like, we don't know how to handle this. So, right. Mm-hmm. So I guess identifying is difficult in itself because I don't. Even now, where I've become more engaged after creating this network and doing everything, working with all of you guys, I'm able to see it now and understand it. But growing up, I well, it sounds that. like across the board, everybody, and no matter the culture, has a difficult time identifying it, expressing it, and we're taught to suppress it instead of, you know, addressing it head on. And I feel like that's a vital part to remember and to utilize that once we start identifying like, hey, something's, you know, something feels wrong inside or identifying that emotion, then we can address it in in a more healthy way of, you know, do I need to seek a therapist? Do I need to seek medication? Do I need to seek, you know, more self-care routines? Like what, question yourself of what do you need more of to work through it instead of just bearing it inside? Um, I think it would also be interesting to note, if you don't mind, Chelsea, uh, Mm -hmm. that, and I don't know how much this affects our community, but a lot of the studies that we do on mental health surround just white men. And they're finding through more studies that the way that depression presents in a black male is different than the way depression presents in a white male. So two people who go, both go to seek out services might be treated differently, not because of the color of their skin so much as they're presenting with different symptoms. Mm -hmm. And if the therapist or counselor or life coach isn't educated to recognize different symptoms of, across cultures, someone could go without treatment for failure to recognize that they are actually suffering. Um, I feel like within the black community, the black community in itself is more difficult to identify and to seek help because um, if you look up, if you Google a, a therapist, 80% of those therapists or 90% are white. Right. Um, they're, or even Hispanic, but you don't see the minority. You don't see black women and black men being those therapists that people can go to. So when a black person Googles like, okay, you know what? I'm finally going to do this. I'm going to go talk to a therapist and they go looking for one. There's not someone readily available that looks like them that can, um, That can be culturally competent enough to understand the things that black people go through because black people go through a lot more racially than whites do. So I feel like that if we um, continue to empower the black community and raise more up to become therapists, then that opens and broadens our, you know, the opportunity for people to get the help that they need. Well, let's take it a little bit deeper. So a lot of people that are, a lot of people that are going to help you to identify is probably going to be your guidance counselor mm-hmm. in your school, right? right? But the guidance counselor role in the school now, it's it's not as prevalent as it was when we were in school. Mm-hmm. So the guidance counselor, they when when and just per se, if you look at it, so when a white kid gets in trouble. They don't go, they go straight directly to the guidance counselor. They go to the guidance counselor and then the guidance counselor can kind of do their job and then kind of reiterate where they need to go from there. But when a black kid gets in trouble in school, it's pretty much straight to the principal office. And then we use a form of discipline to help control it. That's where there's this this miscommunication with it. So, but if it was the same across the board, because even when I was going to, when I was teaching at the schools and I was seeing the troubles and I was like, okay, well, listen, I'm just expecting him to go you know, to the guidance counselor. That sounds like something that you need to do. But the guidance counselors don't even come out of the office. They don't come into the classrooms to talk to the right. kids. They don't do any of that. Because I, I figured if I can see them, because a good majority of the guidance counselors that are in school actually are black. Mm-hmm. That's where they, that's the majority of where their, right. their degree sets them. But then they only, they only communicate to whoever walks through their doors, not who they come to reach out to. And I think that's one of the biggest things. 
if we're trying to figure out a way to be able to, because I don't think it's necessarily a black or white thing. I think it's more along the lines of when you look at black people and they see something wrong, they don't say anything. It's more along the lines of, okay, well, that's just man-man, and that's how man-man is. But then when you do take the time out to get the resources, okay, well, now I'm going to shut down because I don't see anybody that looks like me Mm -hmm. to be able to help me. Right. But then at that same point, I'm like, okay, that's where it stops. Somebody's got to push you forward. I think to piggyback out what you said, uh, because I was thinking a good portion of the problem is that you can see all the signs. Like you can walk up and down the street all day, every day and see a person and know that there's something going on with that person. Or you can walk in any school and see, man, that kid is struggling right there. Maybe not with everybody. will. A good portion of people, you can see it. And we all just choose to turn a blind eye most of the time. And some of it is us as people who are doing just fine with what we have going on. We don't take the time out to go out and and help one another. And I think that's one of the biggest issues, especially in the black community. You see these dudes and these ladies walking up and down the street and they go crackhead gym again or something like that. And no one ever stops to help that person. They'll just keep riding or tugging the chain or whatever and just... One day you don't see that person anymore. And then you'll stop to think, like, man, what happened to that dude that used to push the line more up and down the street? That was crazy. No one gave him any help. He's probably dead or in jail now. So I think it's just us turning a blind eye as well. I agree. I think there's a very big disconnect in our community. And when I say our community, I mean our community as a, a city, our community as a state, our community as a country. I think there's a disconnect in shared values. And I don't think as a community we have shared values. We don't all think that we all deserve the same amount of respect. There are people who actually think we should judge others based on how much money they make or their job title or their education or the color of their skin or how they dress. And I think until we address it uh, systematically and create a value system that all Americans and all people coming to America can share and say, yes, this is what we're striving for, we're not going to implement the amount of services that we need to create a culture that supports each other so that we don't have crackhead Jim walking down the street not getting help. Good point, Alison. <laughs> <laughs> Try to keep it light, you guys. Well, Great. <laughs> so, okay, so how how do you guys feel that we can, um, as a society, help move forward in a positive way? So we keep hearing, like, okay, no one's helping. No one's coming up with a solution. What do you guys think that we could do um, moving forward? Like, I know you said it even starts in the schools. Like, I didn't even... and. We, I mean, on this side, you know, work with youth every day in schools, and I, it didn't even dawn on me that when we work with these kids that have behaviors, they're sent straight to the principal's office. They're not, there's not even an interim of, okay, well, you should also need to talk to a counselor of why you had this fit. Um, I work in a behavioral support classroom that's K through second grade, and one of the things that the teacher does individually is um, every morning she starts the day and she gives these kids a little paper and it says, how do I feel today? Mm -hmm. And it's got little emotions at the top, they circle whatever one, and they write why they're feeling that emotion. And I found it helpful with um, my client that I work with in that class is to come back to that paper after he's had a behavior and say, okay, well, now your your emotion has changed. Uh-huh. Let's talk about what you're feeling now and why we're t- why we're feeling this way, so that way we can improve on next time when we're feeling this way of helpful things that we can do to cope with those. And I feel like there's not a class for that. There's not um, anyone communicating coping skills for emotions anywhere outside of (laughs) outside of our life coaching um, (laughs) empowerment schooling Um, yes absolutely and um, I feel like you know people need more of that even adults it's not just the children that need why am I feeling this and how can I better myself from this or have coping skills to deal with whatever negative emotion that I'm feeling there's a root cause there's an emotion first before it becomes a disorder so if you don't understand emotions right. there's only eight of them right everybody is interchanging feelings emotions and moods and they're not interchangeable there's only eight emotions and that's that on that um 
it's the lack there of knowledge. If someone had told me in school that trust was an emotion, right. that I'm creating preconceived, <laughs> then I wouldn't be so open to trusting people and things. But this is something that's taught, oh, you trust, oh, you love, but you're not teaching me what trust is, the basis, the core of what trust. Anger, you're not teaching me what the core is. I know that I'm angry, but there's levels to anger. Right. You could simply be frustrated. You're not angry, you're frustrated at something or someone. And instead of addressing that situation of of frustration and not directly saying, oh, I'm angry, oh, or I'm mad, depressing. Let's address the, the core, emotion. the emotion before it becomes a disorder because you're layering emotions that you're not even understanding. You're layering feelings that you're not even understanding. And then a doctor, because you've layered so much, you're being medicated and you're being labeled as disorder. But if you start to peel back those layers and layers and layers and talk about back, it, it's going to come back to a source of an emotion. Right. And it, it helps stop setting expectations. And that's another big thing that people do based off of um, emotions, like for trust. You set an expectation for something that you know nothing about. And then when that person breaks that, now you're dealing with a whole Another line of emotion. emotions and feelings, and it started from you, from your thought. That's real tough to do in a classroom with 25 <laughs> kids, or when you at home and it's, but it's single a mindset, mind. though. How, how you like when when I was a teenager, I was the stupidest kid on earth. It's like, how do you know how to change your mind? How do you know any of that? You don't know anything when you're a kid. You just know that you're angry because uh, your pops left or because you right. you got a D. You just know. And there's nobody there to like say, hey, come here, man. It's cool. It's cool. Like, right. you're all right. Right. Like, I think that's what they're saying yes, is that if we don't teach adults how to properly cope with emotions and manage their emotions and express their emotions, how are we supposed to teach our children? Correct. But where are the adults coming from? That's what I'm asking. Where, where are these qualified adults? Well, I think that's the problem. Yeah, we're there are scientific facts. Everything that we have researched is scientific. Nobody is actually taking the time to combine these. You're taught different things in science, mm -hmm. but you're not taught the emotional and the mental to a, to the capacity to where you're able to function with it. You're taught protons, neutrons, and electrons, right. but energy travels, and it's a vibration, and you're not teaching that from a standpoint of emotions. Mm -hmm. So to answer your question, <laughs> Alethea and Alyssa are empowerment coaches who empower, you know, individuals to seek, you know, to identify their emotions and to better con control them. And I was going to wait till the end to announce that I am also with Empowerment Schooling as a life coach. And my goal is to empower these parents to be like, okay, like this is what you're feeling. This is, you know, how you can deal with your emotions. What are your values? What is your purpose for the family? You know, how, how do you envision your life to be? Let's work on that in an action plan to get to that. And I think um, life coaches can really impact other vigils and to help change the next generation with that mindset of learning these coping skills and um, better management of their emotions, for sure. I think the best way to put it, <laughs> the best way to put it is, once you graduate from high school and college, homework is over, right? Mm -hmm. But what we fail to realize is it's not over. Because once you have kids, kids are your homework. <laughs> I'm still doing homework. <laughs> Should we do homework for the rest of our But your kids Learning. are your homework. So that means you, with homework, you have to put time and energy into it, and you actually have to be able to decipher and detain the knowledge. So the thing is, we don't, we don't do the homework. We just, okay, well, this is a situation. Let me just whoop him. Mm -hmm. Right. That's what's going to get him back on track. I think we say best case scenarios is like, what you're saying is like, well, we got to put time and effort into our kids. Best case scenario, that's if it's a structured home with one or two kids and there's two parents in the home. That's Making best like case. at least 70 grand yeah, a year. Yeah, that's best case yeah. scenario. Well, that's, what about worst case scenario? Like ten to $20,000 a year struggling to keep everything on about five kids in the house. That's a lot and of that's the, homework. That's, the, that's see, overwhelming. That's the thing. That's the thing. Whether, whether you have five kids and you're a single mom or you have the double parent home and everything is right, 
it's still all about effort. And try right. yeah. yeah. right. it. What you focus on grows. So because yeah. I mean I understand that. Like I, I deal with I mean with with the development like of the shows and everything that I'm doing now, I'm seeing I'm understanding. I'm understanding, okay, well, listen, you know what? It's a single mom. She's trying to get what she needs to get done. I can identify that she's trying to get some stuff done. Okay. Sometimes it's just sliding over the resources. Hey. Resources, you know exactly. Not, not, there you, you go. To, in, in this day and age now, whether you're white or black, no one wants to be told that they're, fu- I mean, that they're messing up. <laughs> 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 Well, Good got, catch. Well, we got two more of them left, and you're going to use one this early. <laughs> no one, like, that's the problem. No one can take criticism. Nope. So, especially as a parent, you know what I mean? So, if I go to you and say, hey, listen, Alita, mm-hmm. I know you got your kids. Mm-hmm. Here's what I'm seeing. I'm seeing that you're not doing this and this and this and this. Excuse me. <laughs> that's what's going to happen. But if I say, if I kind of come as to approach, if I come and say, hey, Alita, you know what? Um, you, you're doing such a great job as a parent. Here's something else that I, I've put together on myself that I think works that might be able to help. It's just being able to bring that's, the information over or sliding it over. Right. You have to be. Because it's no matter you're white or black. Right. You tell a parent that they are not doing what they, they, they're not doing what they're doing. They are, listen, that, mm-hmm. you, if you ever want to see a parent go ballistic, <laughs> like, that, they'll go tell ballistic. Tell them what yeah. to do. Yeah. I wholeheartedly yeah. agree with yeah. the approach. It's, I think mine is the lack of resources. I, I'm from Kansas City, Missouri, and I have not seen any type of um, black empowerment or whatever. The closest thing we had was the Kaufman Scholars Foundation. The Kaufman Scholars Foundation would take inner city at risk youth and put them in a program and they will after school to finish this program and finish their homework and then they would become a last resort a payer of college, so I mean, you need to get scholarships and whatever else, and then whatever balance you had, they would pay for your college. And that was it. That was the only thing that I can remember growing up that was available to us. My mom didn't have any help with us. She's like, I gotta go to work. You in charge? Like, whoa, I'm in charge. <laughs> Chaos. It was always chaos <laughs> because I ruled with an iron fist <laughs> over my siblings, and you know that was that. So I mean, but. <clears throat> Even so, like, and I've I've been doing some, a lot of things to help with the community and kind of giving those resources. So sometimes, unfortunately, well, not even, I don't want to say unfortunately, I guess sometimes the better way to be able to do it is, okay, yes, you know what, I do have to go to work. You are in charge. Instead of allowing them to watch TV or play video games, okay, hey, listen, here is a workbook. I need you to do these essays. And sometimes it's your peers that help you to be able to identify mm-hmm. a lot better. Mm-hmm. So if you're in charge and you're 10 and you have a nine-year-old, a five-year-old, let's say nine, six, and five that are all in the same realm with you, but you're in charge, if I take the time and energy to empower you, mm-hmm. you will in turn trickle it down. Correct. Right. Because sometimes you just have, sometimes it's, it's, it's. There goes your uh, answer yeah. for the multiple kids. Yeah. Sometimes <laughs> it just happens. It just, unfortunately, dad runs out. It's just moms. Moms got to keep a roof over the, a roof over your head. Food Sometimes mom table. runs out. That's not, mom, we're not gonna bash. Yeah. Sometimes mom <laughs> run out. My mom, mom, mom run out too. Yeah. You know, sometimes it's just it sucks. But sometimes it is about okay. Well, you know what? I don't have the time to be able to do this. And I'm not saying to exclude your other children, but sometimes you go after the one that you know can transfer the data. The siblings, yeah. yeah. So what I hear a lot of what you're talking about, Anthony, sounds like education. That people need to be more educated yeah. to be able to make better choices and how they're being an active participant in a relationship, whether it's a parent-child relationship or a um, husband-wife or anything. And that's what I find is that people have become very passive in their relationships. Then they think that relationships and growth and learning just happens by accident. like, And it doesn't. And I don't know how we got away from that, but I think offering more resources to the community and figuring out how we can uh, use the government to effectively use our tax dollars so that there is more care for parents and for families and all of those things that make a big difference. I'm not going to attack you, but I'm saying, I'm going to say this. If you know, and that's why you see people the way how they are, if you know back home that there are no resources, mm-hmm. you leave, it leaves it up to you yep. to go and get the, to put those resources out there. Like for me, this is not my home 
state. I'm from North Carolina, but I've been here so long. And now that working with these ladies and, and constantly in their face and we're communicating all day, now I take the time out to help my city because I'm like, okay, well, listen, well, this, I know this is a need. This is my community right. now. This is where I raise right. my children. So. Right. This right. is where I put but what my is time that factor? Energy. Sorry to interrupt you, Steve. What is that factor when there are no resources that that and there's two people raised in the same place with same lack of resources? What gives the one person that grit and that determination to rise above their circumstances and the other person who didn't? Loss of average. Self motivation. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. It's, but I mean, like, really, I don't think there's an answer to my question. But it's like, where does it come from? Because I'm I'm somebody who overcame a lot of struggle in my childhood, and there are other people who had similar childhood to mine who didn't overcome the struggles the way that I have. And I don't know what was different about my situation. A mindset. It's, yeah, it's yeah, a mindset. Exactly. Self-motivation yeah. for you it's to... Mindset. Yeah. Do you think some people are just born that way? No, they choose it. I think yeah, mental choose. health Even don't discriminate, Even from a really young age though. before you can understand it. I, I mean, I do think it's... Yeah, I think it is something that's born that way. Because honestly, I mean, if you put... If you put the same two people. And I used to say you're not a product of your environment because you're able to bloom out of your environment. If you live in the hood, you should be able to come out. But it's literally just being able to say, okay, well, look, you know what? In this situation here, it, you're born with it because me and Jim, I don't know why, I, where these names are coming from. <laughs> Crackheads, yeah. Crackhead <laughs> Jim. Me and Jim are living in the same situation. But Jim, and we we have the same situation, the same opportunities, but we just have not, like, we, like, that's how you see your childhood friend. You see, you ever seen your childhood friend, and they're like, well, you see him 10 years later, like, well, damn, they, man, you, damn, you, God, you God, man, you, you don't got no more, you use them all. Damn's okay, God. damn's okay, damn's okay. Wait, first of all, I'm going to get y'all right I was doing the audit there. Hey, listen, I asked about the cuss words, okay? I'm going to beat mine out, okay? I got to do the censorship. I'm going. Okay. Okay, I'll, go ahead, you use one. I'll just beep it out. I'll beep it out. Damn. Damn. <laughs> Damn, you start rough quick. Damn. <laughs> you just go straight to the top, huh? Yeah. But it's, it's those situations like, okay, you see your childhood friend 10 years later, and you're like, oh, man. Well, what happened? Like, and you, you know, I'm, okay. I'm driving around in my nice car, and they on the street. And you're just like, okay. So I do think it's something that you, I think it's something that you're born with because it's like, I mean, I don't know. You just drive and ambition is something that it cannot be taught. It's, it's so let me ask you a question. Have you saw the gentleman that's floating around Facebook that plays the violin and he has no fingers? Yeah. So he was born that way, but his mom never allowed him or anybody to treat him as though he had no fingers. He plays the violin with no fingers. That, he literally was born that way. And his thing, he, like, I just... Get it's eternal. It's got to be an eternal thing. Like, when his I... His mom <laughs> did not allow this to right. be his life. Just because what he did But you're saying see, that parent... That parent was that motivation in the beginning. That parent was the one to feed see, them to I say... At the school we work at, there are children that I can get to... The, you see this right here? <laughs> the look? <laughs> you going to show the camera the look? <laughs> <laughs> but then, the guidance counselor, the dean of students, that the teacher... This it's child has right. torn the whole classroom up, flipped out, and by the time they get past my desk, I'm like this. And they're like, <laughs> no, I haven't even said one thing, you already butt, butt, butt. It's the, the demeanor that they know I actually care. Right. It's not about me. They, they, they're ashamed at the fact that Miss Jackson just saw them in trouble, and they're ashamed versus the principal, the dean of students, and the teacher. There's a level of disconnect because they don't feel that they care. Right. Just because a person can be a guidance counselor, you can hold a title, and it has no value to anybody but you. Right. So to answer your question, we have so many people putting together little fires. Oh, I'm going to change the world. And then three months later, your fire is now a spark. And then this person has a fire over here. And now you're jealous. So now you're talking about it. So it's too many fires. If we all can come with one common ground and everybody take a branch. Here, you, you, you. 
but the, the route is getting longer and longer. We can't build as a community if the community is a fire over here, a fire over here, a spark, a fire. If we can all come together, nobody has to be the head honcho of the, we're all eating yes. because what's gonna trickle down is growth for our immediate future. Yes, I think that goes right back to when I was talking about community values and we don't have that. So we need to reestablish community values so we're all working together towards the same goal that benefits all of us. I I strongly believe that there's a systemic issue at play here. It is. But I guess the question is like what he was saying though. That's the, the, the the man with no fingers. <laughs> that was that bad. Jim. We'll call him Jim. <laughs> the man with no fingers. He had his mom to be able to push him and elevate them. What about the kids that don't? What if what if we both come from the same household where we don't have people to push us? What what makes it what makes it where me and Jim I become successful without any help. I just have, I know to keep going. What makes it where Jim just doesn't keep going? You see what I'm saying? Ooh. What makes it where Jim, and then you gotta add the other factors, drugs, Correct. street gangs, you know, all the different things. So what makes it different? That's why I say- you know, Surrounding yourself with more positive people or surrounding yourself with what you want to see be accomplished. If you're a drug addict and you're hanging out and you're trying to recover and you're hanging out with other drug addicts that, you know, you go out and party on Friday night, that's not going to help you opposed to going to an AA meeting on a Friday night and talking about, you know, ways to improve yourself. The same goes for parents or children. Like they need to be surrounded by people who are positive, whether it be the teachers at the school or the bus driver or, you know, the community church or doing things in the community as a whole, yeah, like it takes a village to raise these kids. So that's where the problem is, because my son knows if he get in trouble by me, it's about seven to twenty more people behind me that is coming. And he doesn't want that. In our community, I just saw it on Facebook, a little boy was fighting someone on the subway and it were maybe it was a grown man, he was fighting a little guy, he could be maybe nine, and the other guys were anywhere between fourteen to sixteen. It maybe was six or seven of them. The guy that the In counseling, we call that figuring out what the primary emotion is. And even though you talk about eight emotions, I think you can even shorten it down to like four primary emotions. Mm -hmm. and, and, you're, yeah, and, you're, you have and when you identify feelings. that, mm -hmm. you can actually then make the correlation between that and the behaviors you're having. And that's when you can identify, oh, I have these behaviors based on this emotion, which there is what you were talking about earlier. Right. So I want to change these behaviors to support a new emotion because I don't want this anymore. And right. I want to better myself. And right. that's where it comes from, just like you said. What about the adults that uh, struggle? It sounds like we're just talking about the kids, but what about the adults that think attending the crack party every Friday is something positive because he's around his crackhead friends? Like, what? Why do I keep using crack? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, for so long. <laughs> I think the main thing here is even for the parents, they have to want to be intentional and want to take that initiative to change. They have to want to surround themselves with better people. They have to want to even g gain these resources. Um, but some I, of people think that they, I'm sorry to cut you off, but they feel like they are around the best right. possible people that right. they could be around, but they are creating a... Uh, a society of destruction and decay. Well, look at it like this. Like, okay, we have business meetings all the time. I'm taking people to business meetings with me all the time. Hell, some people just ride with me. That, that was that, that one. We can yeah, we can use that. that. <laughs> yeah, we can use that one. Yeah. But some people, like, but then what I do is I force people to 
branch into a world that they've never been in. So, and I, Chelsea can attest, I, a lot of my business partners, I force you to come into this world. You may not be the, you may not be polished, you may not wear the best suits, you may not, you know what I mean? So you just need to find somebody that's gonna, hey, you know what, you wanna go to this business meeting with me? Uh, I know you normally do this every Friday night, you wanna, I gotta talk to this guy. And, but, you know, and your, you know, get you, whoever you're meeting up for, hey, listen, I got somebody come with me, they're not, you know, suited up like they should be, but I want them to see and experience this. It's that if I can give you all these different experiences, then boom, okay, then you'll be able to make the change. And that's how we have to do it. And that's why sometimes it is like when you come from the hood or you play around in the hood, like I, I didn't grow up in the hood. I grew up in the suburbs, but I played around in the hood all the time. Now I go back in the hood, but I'm in the hood not to hang out with people. Now I'm in the hood to say, okay, well, listen, this is, this is what, you know what I mean? This is what you guys need to do. You know what I mean? And this is what, hey, what this, and I want to say this is what you need to do. I'm, I'm more like, hey man, did you know about this that's going on? Do you know about that's going on? You know about the block party, but did you know that there's a networking event that, that you can probably go to? You know what I mean? You, you got a job. Just because you work at Burger King doesn't mean you don't have a job. And you can work right. at Burger King and be Reach the best manner. person. Yeah, you can be the best person on fries and just have a great personality. And somebody can take that and say, you know what? I don't even see, I don't even know why you're working at Burger King. Come to my company. You see what I'm saying? It's stuff like that. Right. And it's just, but see, what happens is, as adults, we as people, once we get established, once we have that title over our head, it's like, okay, well, I got this title. I don't have to go back down. No, you gotta, you gotta get back in there. You gotta, now you have the title, use the title to go do what you need to do. And that's how you help the adults. Right. In my opinion, that's how so, you help So it starts from a mind frame. It starts from stop changing your thoughts from I can't to I can. And she's, when she said she'd do that to me, she knew because sometimes we'd be so wrapped up or be so tired to where I'm sitting in front of the computer and I'm like, man, I can't do this. And she's, yes, you can. And I need this done by this, 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 this. So I have to flip my mind. Self talks with my mind. You, you can do whatever you want to do. And a lot of people sit up there and they say, you know, I'm dumb or I can't figure this out. Or, I can't figure this out. And I just can't do this. And that's not, that's not the case. You can do anything that but your mind too. Your mind to do. But like to answer your question, for instance, my mom, she doesn't, she doesn't, wasn't aware of tutoring. Right. When she tried to go back to school, she was immediately defeated because she hadn't done math in over 20 something odd years. It's new math now too. <laughs> that core she math. She yeah. became defeated. With our older generation, I believe we have to speak their language. We have to be, they are straight to the point type of people. They right. can see straight through the BS immediately. Right. So if we're wanting to reach them, we need to reach the crackhead on a crackhead level, right. but level it up on crackhead. You know what I'm saying? Like you can <laughs> Why are we still talking about this? <laughs> so to tie this all together, um, I feel like the best way to change the world is start with yourself. So if we can, you know, not all of us sitting here are parents, but, you know, if we can be that first parent to want to empower our child or even reach out to a peer that we know may or may not need that help, you know, if, like you said earlier, Anthony, of like forcing someone to be in that field, like grab a buddy and force them into a new way of living, of empowering these kids and utilizing resources out there. Um, off the top of my head, um, with people who I network with, um, there's two organizations that I know um, one being a nonprofit organization called Comeback Kids Incorporated, who is actually um, trying to build characters of their kids um, this month. Um, I think October 19th. Is Friday Foundation, um, and that's a day um, that she is hosting an event for kids on building their characters, and it could be a very good spot for parents to go to as well with their children, um, building a bond with them and developing those values that we said earlier. Um, another organization um, that is coming to mind is Ann Marlowe, and it's um, um, A A M L M A A. M-H-L, so it's African-American Mental Health 
I forgot what the L is. African American Mental Health. Um, and Marlo, if you look up her name, she is um, out in our community changing people, African Americans, with their mental health. She is also um, having an event today for Family Talks, and it's basically um, an event to empower parents and talk about mental health with their children. And these are, you know, readily available to the community, you know, low price or free events. Um, it's just a matter of these parents getting out there and utilizing the resources available to them. I know Comeback Kids Incorporated um, showed some frustration um, on social media last week that, you know, she has this event readily available, but no one's no one's participating. No one's utilizing it or showing interest in this. And that's the first thing that we have to do is spark that interest in our parents that are around us or even young adults who are single. You know, those are could be role models to our children. And, you know, earlier he was like, well, we just keep talking about the kids. But that, you know, yes, it needs to start with the parent and the adults in the situation to change. But once we start empowering the youth, that changes the next generation. Like, that's a whole new uh, generation that we can get to be in positive mindsets, for sure. Right. Um, I want you to think Steve Brown don't love the kids. <laughs> <laughs> he does. <laughs> I'm just saying. You know. but, I mean, I think, I think one of the things that, that I, I understand, like, I, I, I share the same frustrations, because I generate a lot of events that are nine times out of 10 free. But what I'm learning now and going into this is now, you have to use different resources to attract different people. Mm -hmm. So, you know, sometimes it's, cause I'm, it, what happens is when you're, it, you're overeducated. So you're like, oh, you know what? I know this is what the community needs. Right. This is the information, but then you don't add any, you don't couple anything with it. So sometimes you have to bring a DJ in there, right. turn it into a party. Right. right. And that's why we keep doing it. <laughs> Who doesn't like DJ? Yeah, yeah. But you have to, that's why. And so when you see the events that Emerging Black does, it's always events where we're coupling different things. Cause I'm gonna be able to use this to get you to come here. Now that you're here, you're trying, cause now, <laughs> boom, it's, you're gonna take this now. Right. And, and I think you did it, you did it when we did, we partnered together and did the, um, the play day. The play day started off with, we knew there was information that we had to get out to the community. We had to figure out a way to get the community to come to the spread event. the word you know and saying? communicate. So we had to take it a little bit further. Hey, listen, you know what? Have a kid do yoga, kids yoga, play doh, slime, whatever is popular in that situation. That's how we do it, and that's how we bring it together. I I, I share the same frustration because I'm like, you need the information. You should just come, but it doesn't work like that. Food works too. Food, not good food. Food does not, Believe it or not, what? food does not work. Somebody told a me I was getting a free meal. Yeah, a lot of people you would assume that, but food does not work anymore. It's more along the lines of like, what's in it for me? Uh -huh. And that's that's how you get a it. meal. Meals don't work. How much do you what get access to transportation plays in participating in community events? I'm glad you said that. <laughs> uh, so um, that is a critical critical piece. So there's two ways to solve it, and that's what we've been working on, especially with me transitioning out. I've literally been trying to figure out a way to be able to do it. Unfortunately, not, need a bus. not to nothing, but yeah, that's why you have to you have to couple you have to partner with a, and it doesn't have to necessarily be a uh, like JTA because that ain't happening. Mm. But you know you have to couple with a, a business that does do transportation. Maybe you know outsource some Ubers or something of that nature. That's that's the biggest thing. Is trying to get them there, and then you have to. Couple, a lot of people forget that piece too. Because I, I would love to go if I ain't got a car. Mm -hmm. But be open communication. If you don't have, like I could say, you know maybe for the person who is hosting the event to be like, you know, if you have issues, if you would like to attend, but have financial issues, transportation issues, if there is obstacles in your way to getting here, please reach out so that way we can help you, you know. Then you still that, have those yeah. people yeah, that, 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 that yeah. core of embarrassment. Oh my God, I had a car. She's going to be talking about me behind my back. And, Black people right. good for that. Black people are like, I don't need them all in my business. Right. Yeah, they don't need to know what's going on over here. Yeah. So they keep it in the house. Tell them why. Oh, girl, my baby got sick. You lying. Yeah. Yeah. You just didn't have no ride and you was embarrassed to say that. Well, if the person needs... Me, you know, if if a person needs the internal motivation or to help bring out that internal motivation, they can always reach out to empowermentschooling.com to gain a life coach to um, help them. <laughs> 
to help them get motivated and empower them to do those things that in, in their head they're doing a negative talk of I can't do this so if you need that I've gave several resources here available to you guys so I hope you guys check them out and um, utilize them um, that is all the time that we have today so I want to thank um, my listeners out there for taking the time today to tune in thank all of my lovely guests for coming in and being a part of this today um, and as we bring this episode to a close, and I'm totally throwing off some of you guys who have not been on my show before, um, that I want you guys to repeat this mantra after me, and we can close out our session. So. Completely forgot about the mantra. Yeah, I know, I know. I, everybody did, but that's okay. That's how I close out. Okay, oh, I so. It, I have my own mantra, too, so I think it's yeah. Yeah. excited to hear it. <laughs> so if you guys can just repeat after me. I am my thoughts, and I choose what I think. I am my thoughts, and I choose what I think. I am fully present and in the moment. I am fully present and in the moment. I have a mind free of worry and anxiety. I have a mind free of worry and anxiety. (laughs) I am happy. I am happy. I am the powerful creator of my life. I am the powerful creator of my life. I am strong. I am strong. I matter. I matter. I am worthy. I am worthy. I deserve to love myself more. I deserve to love myself more. I am thriving. I am thriving. Until next time. Thank you.